Hi fellow ants, back again to Ant Alpha videos, and today we are going to discuss about the basic parameters in stable diffusion and how to leverage it to your advantage. These parameters are the basic and most important in the stable diffusion. Those are the settings that you will tweak frequently when generating images, and trust me, the settings are some ways to boost your image quality. Now let's get started. This time I'm using the stable diffusion in RunPod. And if you want to know how to set up the Stable Diffusion web UI in RunPod, you can check my previous video from the link I insert on the right upper corner. My pod is running and I will connect to the port 3000 and let's wait until it loads. Now the web UI is ready and the first time you open the automatic 1111 interface, it will always direct you to the text to image prompt box. There are two tabs to generate a picture, the text to image and image to image. As the name suggests, the text-to-image basically generates the images only from text prompts, while image-to-image -image generates from picture combined with text prompt as a reference. But we will start from the very basic, the text-to-image generation. There are two prompt boxes which are positive and negative prompt. The positive prompt is where you want to type what you want to generate, while the negative prompt is the text that you don't want to show in your image results. There are a few tips that you need to know in prompting so that it can elevate your image generation res result too. Now I will try to generate a random girl's image first as a test. I will also add negative prompts to have more control over the image. And you can also put words like low quality in the negative prompts and something like high quality or masterpiece in the positive prompt too. All of this with the purpose to elevate your picture's quality later on. Now we hit generate and wait. Since I'm using the V15 Prunet model, the result might be not as powerful as the ones from the communities. I think the current result is not too good. So I will try to generate another picture with the same prompt. I actually prefer this new picture because it gives more details. The stable diffusion also can recognize some celebrity names. Usually, uh, most common celebrities such as Brad Pitt, Angelina Jolie, Selena Gomez, and other celebrities too. This means that the stable diffusion has been trained using the pictures of Angelina Jolie. Besides that, stable diffusion can also recognize some artists or like many artists or painter names such as Van Gogh or Leonardo da Vinci and also styles like anime style, illustration, sketch, painting, photography. You can tweak around this area and see which style would suit you the best. Next part, model. Also usually called as checkpoints, are pre-trained stable diffusion ways intended to generate a particular style of images. There are many models from the community that you can download for free. Let's go through civitai.com. Downloading the models from civitai.com is easier because you can see the preview images of the models, so you can pick which models that you want. I would recommend you to download DreamShaper, Anything, and Realistic Vision. The DreamShaper will give you a semi-realistic results. It usually goes well with both human pictures. For Anything V5, it is used as a base model to generate anime-style pictures. It also supports pictures for landscapes and other objects quite well. Last one, the realistic vision is suitable for generating real-life pictures of a person or perhaps animals. So there are lots of experimental on this part that you can try using the stable diffusion later. Now let's try to download the DreamShaper model into our stable diffusion. And remember, to download in RunPod, just copy the link from the resource and then open your terminal and just use wget to download. When your download is finished, just go back to the Stable Diffusion web UI and then refresh the checkpoint tab and you will see your new checkpoint there. On to the next section. Under the prompt boxes, there is a drop down box called sampling method and it will show many types of sampler. Sampler is a tool that affects how an image is created in stable diffusion models. The purpose is to discover the optimal sampler that can generate fast results. However, these results are purely experimental and could vary based on other sliders or prompts as well. Now, I will generate another image using the sampler DPM++ 2M SD Icaras to see how it looks like. To compare, I will use Euler A to generate another image as well. As you can see, each sampler has different results with the same prompt. I will show a comparison table from some samplers that is widely used. Based on the teddy bear picture, 
Some samplers may have different results, but some also overlaps with the same style. I will suggest using the Euler A, DPM++ 2M SD Caras, and DDIM, or UniPC, because they can generate pretty fast compared to the other samplers. And again, feel free to experiment with the samplers and see which one works better for you. The next part is width and height. These two bars are to adjust the output image's resolution. By default, Stable Diffusion often generates image in size 512 x 512 because they use the 512 resolution to train the image datasets in Stable Diffusion. I will try to generate an image in the 512 resolution first, and then we can compare later on. Next, I will try to generate an image using 512 x 768 resolution and see how it differs. I recommend you to generate with resolution 512 to 768 for optimum results. And of course, the larger the resolution, the better the results will be. On the next part, we have the batch count and batch size sliders. So these two bars function is to help you to set how many image count that you want to generate at once. If you put either batch size or batch count at 4, it will generate 4 images. But if you select batch size 2 and batch count 2, it will multiply and produce 4 images as well. But I suggest to use batch size because it takes lower VRAM usage than batch count and it can also produce image faster than batch count. On to the next part is the CFG scales. So CFG scales adjust how much the stable diffusion listens to the prompt and input images rather than going wild. Basically, how much the image would look closely to the input prompts. There are also 5 CFG range that you can use as a reference to set the desired CFG scales. Feel free to experiment with the CFG sliders. Next one is the sampling step. Sampling step is to determine how many steps does the stable diffusion need to produce image matching your ideal criteria. The stable diffusion can set the sliders even until 150 steps. Generally, around 25 steps are more than enough to obtain high quality images. Increasing the steps may lead to a slightly different image. They say the higher the steps you set, the higher quality it will produce. But on the other hand, it's not always the case. Sometimes the steps between 64 and above doesn't generate much differences. The higher the steps you use will also took more time for the results time processing and also more GPU intake. The next part will be seed. Every image generated from stable diffusion will have a unique identity called seed. It is a number that contains the image-specific style information. The default seed by stable diffusion will be minus 1, which means random. In here, I will try to generate an image using the random seed. Whenever a picture is generated, it will have a unique seed. When you copy the seed and generate an image again, it will have the same base image even if you change the prompt. The new generated pictures actually has the same style information from the picture before. As you can see, the face and the hair still looks quite the same from the original seed. And if I try to regenerate again, it will show us the same picture again. But if I use a random seed, it will generate another different pictures. On the next section, let's move over to the image to image tab. The parameters in image to image is still the same except for the denoising strength. Denoising strength only exists in the image to image tab and by default from stable diffusion it's set on 0.75. This allows stable diffusion to extract the image information as a prompt for better results later. So whenever you use image to image, always use the interrogate deep boru or interrogate clip to extract the image's prompt information for better result later. The differences between these two functions of interrogate is that DeepBoru uses tags that separates each word with comma, while interrogate clip forms a whole structure of sentence as a prompt. Feel free to choose between the two and experiment with both. There are no better or worse options, it's purely depending on what you aim for. The usual scale would be CFG7 until 12. There are many rooms on how you can find the sweet spot to collaborate with the stable diffusion. If you are content with what you see at CFG 7 or 8, then there's no need to switch to higher levels. After you input a picture in image to image, imagine this scaler as a tool that lets you decide how much of the original image that you want to keep in the final results. 
if you set a lower value, the stable diffusion will try its best to preserve as many details from the original image as possible. If you go for a higher value, stable diffusion will add new things to the image, and the picture will blend in more with the checkpoints that you selected. So, if you want more artistic and creative results, you can aim for a strength above 0.5, but if you want to stick closely to the original, you can go for a lower value below 0.5. To understand it easier, I will try to generate another example image first. With 0.5, it still produced similar image to the original. Now, if we slide it lower into 0.25, the image result won't change as much from the original. If we slide it on the range 0.1, the result will be very similar and canny like to the original image. Meanwhile, if the denoising strength is set into 0.75, it gives stable diffusion much more freedom in generating the image and might not be similar as much for the pose. Here is a comparison image of denoising strength from 0.1 until 10. From 0.7 onwards, it starts to become more creative, and you can adjust this to whatever preference that you want. And that concludes the explanation for basic parameters in stable diffusion. If you have more questions, don't hesitate to join our Discord channel and ask us right away. And don't forget to subscribe and like this video. Until next time.